ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate with your host, Kevin Perenio. As an owner and C-level executive for 20 plus years in finance, KP is here to serve you with all of his knowledge and experience. Whether you're a broker, realtor, or just interested in the economy, this is the podcast for you. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Austin, Texas. Love coming back to Austin. I went to school here from 94 to 98, and the Texas Mortgage Banker Association is having their annual convention. It's a really good show for those of you that are um, on the mortgage banking side. Um, always a great conference, great speakers. Marina Walsh from NBA giving the outlook on what's going on in the economy this morning or this afternoon. Uh, Brian Montgomery, uh, former HUD commissioner, is the FHA commissioner center talking. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of activity, a lot of people talking about what they're doing and gearing up for uh, getting into uh, next year. And um, it's interesting, you know, there's a lot of similarities to the talks that's going on within our industry and our community and the broader economy. And that makes sense because housing uh, was a beacon of light during the recession. And, um, you know, now that housing is slowing down a little bit, it's still a fantastic year. There's tons of business. Um, you know, it may not be a, the it only going to be the seventh best year ever as far as, uh, you know, volume is concerned, but it's down, right? And so, you know, there's growth, there's slowing growth, and then there's flat out recession, right? So, you know, there's a lot of talk about the R word recession, which by the way, for our business is a very good thing because then there's a ton of refinances, really low interest rates, and we start booming. And, um, and that's a good thing. Um, but right now we're in that in-between zone, you know, where the expansion of the economy is slowing. We're still expanding, we're still growing. There's still people buying houses. There's still no housing supply shortage. There's still 11 million jobs open. It's still a very fantastic uh, economy, but it's not expanding at the same pace as it was before and neither is housing. So slowing growth is still growth. So, um, but when there's slowing growth in the stock market, um, things uh, things tend to change. So I, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm gonna talk about stocks in a second. Um, I'm not responsible for your losses, only your profits. Um, you know, all that legalese. But I do have some uh, some talk here about uh, about stocks. By the way, we're at Moonshine Grill here. Radiant's putting on a nice dinner um, on the veranda here. They're back in there somewhere. Um, so our economy is 19% larger now than in 2019. We are 19% larger now than in 2019. For those that have owned a home, you've seen rapid appreciation, probably no less than... 12% in any market, some markets as high as 28% year over year. Obviously, that pace of growth is unsustainable. So it will slow down. But slowing growth is not recessionary growth. It is not a detraction or loss of growth. That will come. But that typically doesn't come until after the job market gets really weak. And right now, the jobs are very strong. The economy is still strong. But let me say something. There are really broad forces um, in the economy and uh, money that goes, uh, you know, changes hands between bonds and stocks. Remember, we buy and sell money. The mortgages that we do, the real estate that is financed, the cash that is used for paying for homes, we buy and sell money. That's our business. So speaking of money, the biggest money markets that are out there, uh, bond market, equity market, uh, Obviously, real estate is a massive asset class. Um, right now, a bond that is about two to three years is the same yield as a high dividend um, yielding stock or equity. So there are trillions of dollars that um, are potentially flowing away from stocks and equities into bonds. I mean, bonds, the price of bonds are cheap. Uh, the, the price are cheap. They're at you know historic lows generally um, not all-time lows but historic lows and the yields are up right now so um, <clears throat> so as we watch bonds and stocks compete for dollars um, we've seen our interest rate go up we talk about inflation the fed spoke last week and the fed said we are not afraid 
of taming inflation with 50 basis point rate hikes. And we may see that happen. We may see three of those over the May, uh, June, and even um, later September, I believe, meeting. So um, there's the Fairmont Hotel. That's where the conference is at. So as we watch bonds and stocks compete for dollars, it does impact housing. It impacts interest rates, which impacts the economy. If the economy slows, if we start to see signs of slowing economy, slowing growth, you will see things change in the stock market. Over the next four days, one quarter of the S&P 500 index reports earnings. Half of the NASDAQ 100 uh, weight, the QQQ, is reporting. Seven of the top 100 report. So we've got Alphabet, we've got Google, okay, right? That's the same company. We've got them reporting. We've got Microsoft. We also have Meta, which is the old Facebook, Amazon, Apple. These are massive trillion dollar companies. And when they report earnings and decide what's going on, they will give guidance going forward. Hey, iPhone sales are slowing down in the future. We're seeing cloud service contracts being disrupted. We're seeing supply chain uh, hurt because of China's zero COVID policy in Shanghai and now into Hong Kong. If they talk about slowing growth ahead and give guidance that things ahead will be slower than they are now, like Netflix did when they said, we lost 200,000 subscribers and they think they're gonna lose another 2 million over the next quarter. Like some of the banks said that they see slowing guidance coming on. If you hear that, then you will see the stock market go through a really rough patch here in the coming days and weeks. Um, but it's all part of the Fed digestion. It's gotta have a level reset. Where is our economy? Where are our mortgage lenders? Where are our real estate companies now? There's lots of business, there's a little less business but there's still growth and business. And so it's a slowing growth. So these are things you have to look at. Um, we have not gone into a full-blown recession yet. And we could see that, I don't know, over the next uh, 12, 18, 24 months. And of course that will impact us. So uh, we're gonna watch all this data. We're gonna watch inflation. We're gonna watch these companies report earnings and whether they made money or not and whether they reported guidance down going forward. Those are all things that absolutely have to do with buying and selling money, which is what we do. And oh, by the way, especially those in non-QM, you, know you know the deal. The secondary market is cold, heartless, and unforgiving. It doesn't care about your 401k. It doesn't care about your loan that was locked. It doesn't care about you missed your extension. These rates, this money, it goes away. So let's all be mindful of our rates, our locks, the economy, and watch this data because it's all interconnected globally at the palm of your hand on this little cell phone, fourth industrial revolution, Cheers from Austin, Texas. Bye. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.